Hello everyone! It feels like it's been forever since I made a video, um, but I'm so excited to share with you today the final results of my 3D printing technology maker experience. Um, and I say final, but hopefully it's not my last ever experience with a 3D printer um, because now that I kind of know the fundamentals of how to utilize this technology, um, I think it could be very helpful down the road. So if in my years as a chemistry teacher there is an opportunity to explore 3D printing even further, um, I think thanks to my experience this semester, I can say that I'd be happy to see such an opportunity. Um, I think it'd be a great learning experience, not only for me, but also for my students who are looking to me to sort of guide them in their journeys through chemistry. So, um, to give you a little background first, I had an article post a while back that described my first time ever trying to 3D print something that I'd created on my own with a program called Tinkercad. Um, I prototyped a small beaker and a test tube, keeping with the chemistry discipline. Um, I also included the link to that article in this post if you'd like to go look at it. Um, so anyway, I wanted to print the beaker and let me show you what it, what it turned out here, what it looked like here. So this is how it turned out. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> As you can see, it's very uh, incomplete. You can kind of see how it looks like a beaker, um, but obviously not the entire thing. Um, so I was disappointed to say the least, but then again, happy that I got this week to maybe try it again, try printing it again. Um, so thanks to the help of one of my professors, I learned that if I tried making the walls of the beaker just a little bit thicker, um, the printer might be able to better translate the design and then produce the object correctly. And look, it worked. Isn't that cute? So this little guy took about 25 to 30 minutes to print um, completely. As you can see, it's hollowed out, so obviously you could hold a liquid or something in there. It's got a little bit of the lip there to pour chemicals out. Can't get the thing right. So because this is so thin and, and because it's so small, um, that still looked a little rough around the edges, as you can see. Um, but anyway, it was so worth it to me to finally um, be able to see and touch my creation. Um, so my idea with making um, a beaker was to explore the idea of maybe making your own labware, possibly for a chemistry classroom with a 3D printer. Um, but as you can see, there are a few problems associated with that. Um, first of all, 3D printing is not exactly very quick, uh, at least not yet. Um, my little beaker, like we said, took almost a half hour to make it, and you can see how small it is still. Um, so mass production of glassware is still probably the more efficient way to go in terms of that. The other thing is that obviously your labware has to be able to hold up against any harsh chemicals that you might be using, um, and glass holds that advantage too. It's a very resistant material to chemical corrosion. Um, but someday perhaps they will come up with a uh, printing filament that is also very resistant, um, but that day might be far off. So. Uh, wrapping this all up in terms of where something like this could maybe fit into the SAMR model, uh, SAMR model, um, I think it's definitely a means of substitution, as you can see, um, but perhaps not the most efficient kind of substitution, according to the logistics that we kind of just mentioned. So, But I was so happy, so happy that this worked out this time, um, and I was excited to share it with you all. So, um, until next time, thanks for watching.